Having now gone through all the conventional modes of ventilation, I'm now going to go to high frequency oscillation ventilation. There are two modes here, high frequency oscillation ventilation on its own and a mode that combines high frequency oscillation with conventional mandatory ventilation. With the SLE 5000, it is very easy to switch over. You can go from conventional ventilation to high frequency oscillation ventilation without having to change the patient's circuit, without adding anything into the circuit, or adding anything onto the machine, or having to disconnect the patient circuit in any shape or form and thereby losing any recruitment that you may already have achieved. Going from SIMV, which I'm currently in, and select high frequency oscillation, I can now set up for HFO. I have a rate of 10 Hz. I'm going to increase my mean higher than normal for demonstration purposes only. Normally, it would be 2 millibars more than the current mean airway pressure. So I'm just going to take that to 10 millibars. You cannot set a delta P until you have pressed the confirm button. Delta P is also known as amplitude, oscillation, and some people also refer it to it as the chest wiggle or wobble. Now I increase the delta P until the point where I have adequate chest wall movement. And at that point I stop increasing the delta pressure. As with conventional ventilation, the settings that I have set will change as soon as the infant is on the ventilator. High frequency oscillation ventilation by its definition is lung protective as it delivers small tidal volumes at very fast rates. With high frequency oscillation ventilation, it is a good idea to have a slightly larger endotracheal tube in situ than you would have used in conventional ventilation because it does increase the leak at the end of the tube. You would also need to have a fairly good idea of the baby's condition so as to know what to do with the mean airway pressure. Once you have taken a chest x-ray, the outline of the lung fields in the shape of the diaphragm will give you an indication as to whether the lungs are inflated too much or not enough. If the lungs are overinflated, you will need to reduce the mean airway pressure, or if they are underinflated, you will need to increase the mean airway pressure. Once the baby is stable or settled, the next thing that is required is a blood gas. And here you are looking for the CO2 and the pH. Once you get the blood gas results back, you can then adjust the delta P in accordance with the CO2 reading. If the CO2 is higher than acceptable, you would then increase the delta P to get rid of the CO2. If increasing the delta P does not remove the excess CO2, you could then reduce the frequency by 1 Hz. By doing that, you're increasing the tidal volume, which will get rid of CO2. However, either do one or the other, and never both together. One of the first things you're going to do is to decrease the CO2 as quickly as you can. During high frequency oscillation ventilation you still have all your measurements of breaths per minute, end tidal volume, minute volume, leak percentage, the dCO2 and the mean airway pressure. As far as the rate is concerned, very often you will start at a rate of 10 Hz which is the equivalent of 600 breaths per minute. A rate of 15 Hz is the equivalent to 900 breaths per minute, but there is no clinical evidence to go beyond 15 Hz. 
there is a reading here called the DCO2. The DCO2 is not a reading of CO2, but is an indication of how efficient your alveolar ventilation is. If your alveolar ventilation is efficient, you will be getting rid of excess CO2. And if it is inefficient, you will not be clearing the CO2. The DCO2 is derived from the square of the measured tidal volume times the frequency in hertz. So currently my tidal volume is 10 and my frequency is 10. So the square of 10 is 100 times 10 hertz is 1000. My DCO2 is currently reading 924. Now that is purely a guide and not an absolute number. It is suggested that when you do your first blood gas of the day that you record that number and thereafter any significant changes either up or down in the DCO2 requires a blood gas to be done. If there is no significant change, you don't have to do any extra blood gases. This quite often helps in situations where you do not have any other form of CO2 monitoring other than arterial blood gas. The other thing that may occur in high frequency oscillation ventilation is that there may be a need to listen to the heart sounds. To do that, you don't want to disconnect the circuit or go back to a conventional mode, so go to the standby button. Press it until it changes colour. The oscillation stops, but the recruitment or volume is maintained. Now pressing the standby button again, The oscillation restarts and all you have to do is press auto set in the alarm window. In this way you have lost absolutely no recruitment at all. The next thing you might wish to do is to adjust your high and low pressure alarms. Often particularly if you have a bigger baby who might be restless or cough into the circuit, then you will get constant alarms. Therefore, I suggest that you just open up the window slightly to cater for any of these normal movements. Equally, a baby with hiccups will take the low pressure negative, so increase that window as well. Your baby is well able to breathe spontaneously and you do encourage spontaneous breathing as that would be an indicator as to when the weaning process could start.